I want to settle for a few minutes uh, next on um, talking about intergenerational relationships and friendships because I think that when, I'm, when we're talking about growth, we've got to think a little bit about discipleship, and I think the Bible really talks to us about um, intergenerational, inter, how am I struggling with that word, intergenerational friendships. And I want to talk about them because I think that they take a little bit of extra work. I think that friendships with our peers are much easier. We find it's easier to find things to talk about or just be ourselves. But I think scripture's clear that we're supposed to have relationships with people both older than we are and younger than we are. And it's and I want to talk about that a little bit. In the scriptures, God's plan for discipleship includes or, or is, is um, the examples that we see are older believers discipling younger believers. Now, it doesn't always have to do with age, right? There, someone could be a new believer and, and um, older than you are who, who asks you for input in their lives on spiritual things. It doesn't always have to do with age. It often does, but not all the time, and it's not always easy, and so it takes work, Because friendships are not just things that we stumble upon. You might think that when you get here for um, freshman orientation, right? That we just fall into friendships. But we choose, we choose our friends because every time, you have a decision every day to who you're going to hang out with. So we choose who our friends, friends are going to be. And they're only built with intention, right? You don't have a good friendship with somebody that you just see crossing campus and give a wave to, right? It's, you have to be intentional. And so we have to be intentional to build relationships with people who are older than we are, who can invest in our spiritual lives and can help us, give us a glimpse of what life will be like in the next stage. I'm so thankful for a few women that I have in my life. Sherry Hara is one at my church, a woman in my life who... Um, it's a few years older than I am who, when I have a big question, I need prayer about something, I, I call her and I say, can we just have tea? And, I, and we just, I just let her speak into my life. And I'm thankful because she does. I give her, I, I say things to her like, please tell me if you think I'm being ridiculous. <laughs> or please tell me if you think I'm crazy for this. And, uh, and she does. And I'm so thankful for women like that in my life. It takes intention. But I want to really encourage you to, to look for someone to play this role in your life if you don't have someone. I would really encourage you, look for someone at your church, an older woman, an older man in your church, not someone who's up front all the time because there are hundreds probably in most of your churches, hundreds of others who are not up front but are godly people who are living the kind of life that you're hoping to live 10 years from now, and you can learn from them, and you can go sit around their kitchen table and ask questions, ask them what they're studying in the Word, ask them what it's like to have four kids, you know, whatever it is. But we've got to make the effort, and I think I've said up here before to you all that I've learned that people older than you think that you don't want to spend time with them, so you've got to take the initiative. <laughs> Find someone who serves behind the scenes, Find someone who's not up front, who is longing to hang out with a college student. There are lots of people. And ask them to be your, your older friend. <laughs> be my friend. Make me coffee. Well, in Titus 2, we see this beautiful example. Paul's getting at the end of his life. He is leaving... <clears throat> He's writing to Titus, who he's left in charge of this church on Crete. And he is giving sort of last instructions, not knowing if he'll ever talk to Titus again or write to Titus again. He's giving him last instructions. And in this really short little letter, he spends about a fourth of it talking about the importance of relationships between older men and younger men and older women and younger women. And he gets really specific and he even tells them the, the specific things that they should do when they're spending time together and the things, the things that the older men and the older women should look to stir up in the younger. 
Things like self-control and diligence and submission and respect for husbands and kindness and be dignified. There's a whole list. But Paul is showing us here that his idea of what makes a thriving church will only happen if the olders are investing in the youngers. And if the youngers want it and welcome it and are humble enough to accept it, it's the only way the church continues, isn't it? If you think about it. If we all walk along thinking that we've got our acts together and we don't let the olders speak into our lives, then what's going to happen when they're gone, <laughs> right? This is how the church continues to be healthy, is this kind of discipleship. So right in the smack, of, uh, smack in the middle of uh, chapter 2, it says, show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. He's speaking right there to the, to the older men and the older women. Show yourself to be a role model. Now, I'm hoping that what you're hearing is the need to find an older man or woman in your church if you don't have one and let them speak into your life. But what I also want you to hear is that you also are called to be a model of good works, right? You're never off the hook. Even if you're only a Christian one week, you're older than somebody, right? You're not off the hook. You also need to think about where and how and when you are to show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works and to welcome younger people into your life so that they can see how you live, how you treat your friends. Imagine how much a, a brand new Christian high schooler could benefit from listening to you talk about your motivation to do your schoolwork well, or your motivation to um, sacrifice for the sake of your difficult roommate. I mean, just imagine how much somebody five years younger than you, new in Christ, who, never heard stuff like that before, how much they could benefit. 